when I was 10, I learned in school about how humans have been and are destroying the environment of this planet. I probably saw a picture of this, this plastic ocean. And I remember how frustrated and sad I felt. And as any 10-year-old would do, or actually quite a lot of adults as well, was to aim my frustration towards my parents. So I walked with sturdy steps at home, to home with a mission. I opened the door and I see my grandmother and mother in the living room. And they say, hi, how are you? Like this was any other day. This was not any other day. This was the day I found out the horrible truth about humanity. Yes, I was quite a serious and dramatic child, as you might hear. So I turn towards them with anger in my eyes, and I say, thank you. They're super confused, and just ask, thank you for what? Thank you and future gen or previous generations for destroying this planet. Now I have to fix it. So I run off, leaving them there, confused, not sure, they were not sure if they would dare to laugh. So that is the story, or the beginning of the story of me becoming an environmentalist. There was something inside of me that woke up that day. It was like a dragon that has been sleeping for years. It hasn't really been sleeping ever since because it feeds on injustice. But I won't lie, of course it has taken an occasional nap when hope has been lost. For example, when certain presidents have been elected the past years, I think he got a migraine and just hid in a deep, dark corner of my body. So I realized for me to thrive from this fire inside, I need to hope. I need to dream about the better future. Because how can we not lose hope when we're only fed with ne negative images? So now, almost 20 years forward, I'm here today with all of you talking about sustainability. Sustainability has become a buzzword. We hear it everywhere. And it's actually being used as a marketing strategy today. So, what is sustainability? You can say, it's sustainability, it's meaning that we can actually keep on living on this planet, us and other beings. It's all about protecting the natural systems that keeps us alive. For example, keeping the photosynthesis, continuing working so we have oxygen to breathe. But it's not only about us here. It's also about the future generations, the species, human and non-human species, who haven't been born yet. Of course, the opposite would be unsustainability, which means continue living like we do today. Call it business as usual. We're living on finite resources but acting like they will never end. We're exceeding the planetary boundaries. That is unsustainable. I had a conversation with a person a couple of days ago. It felt like a conversation I've heard or had before as they asked me, are you an English teacher? When I told them I actually do sustainability research, it followed with a question I've heard many times before. So what should we do? A lot of us know about the unsustainable life and how unsustainable this world is, but we don't actually know how to act. 
I was sure that this person had heard the mantra about stop eating meat, stop using that plastic straw. So I didn't tell them that. Because we continue eating meat, flying, using plastic straws, even though we know its effects. So in order for us to understand unsustainability, we need to dig a bit deeper. So humans are not only biological entities. We're also cultural and social beings. Therefore, ideas and norms shape our behavior. From the unsustainable behavior of the CEO of a multinational company to the decision maker all the way to the local consumer. Because when an idea becomes culturally dominant or perceived as culturally dominant, we imagine that this is the only way. This is the way we always lived and this is how we always will live. So us living on this planet means that we're part of a huge system, a complex system that has a lot of smaller systems together that keeps us alive and keeps this life rolling. As was mentioned before, the Buddhist monk Thich Nhat Hanh, he once said that not only is no person an island, but rather their interbeing is shared with the plants and animal he eats. The people who make their clothes and food, the people who populate their home, country, and the very world he perceives. The insects that pollinate the trees, they yield their fruit, shade them from the sun, and provide lumber to their house. So the story we're living by today is the story of us being above nature. We're acting like the rulers of the world, trying to control and dominate its natural systems. It's like we're disconnected from the rest of the living world. We're here, humans, societies, and they're over there, nature, animals, other living beings. It's so much easier to dominate and suppress something that's other than yourself. So this story of separation, technological arrogance, and human superiority over nature is actually leading to the ecological crisis we see today. We're acting like this planet is ours to take rather than treating it what it actually is, our home. We continue exploiting natural resources, digging for oil and minerals, constantly digging for more. And the more we hang on to the life we've been living, the more difficult it will be for us to adapt to the aftermath of the world we created. The majority, or a lot, of sustainability measures today follow this idea, but focusing on technology, economic growth, green growth. But it's actually not going into the core of the problem. So an example of this superiority of, over nature is how we've been coping with climate change through, for example, the geoengineering. It's the deliberate large-scale manipulation of the climate. There's a list of ideas of creating space mirrors to reflect away the sunlight, to pulling out carbon dioxide and putting it back into the ground just to hinder the heating of the planet. Nothing of this has been proven to work. But as climate, the climate crisis is becoming so real, more support is going towards this direction. And so much can go wrong when manipulating such a complex system as the climate system is. 
So how can we believe that this is better to come up with these crazy ideas that don't even work than actually working towards sustainable living? Some would motivate and say, oh, we need to survive. It's about survival. Fair enough, we, we want to survive. But it's getting to the point where we're actually jeopardizing our own survival. And how do we think we have the right to endanger all living species on this planet just for our short-term gain? It's an issue of entitlement. We think we're entitled to do whatever we want, as we're the intelligent life on Earth. We're the most intelligent, some say. But we can't do whatever we want just because we perceive ourselves as intelligent. Because we need those species, we need natural systems to survive on this planet. But not only to survive, also to thrive as living beings. I'm sorry, this has been horrifying. I'm scaring you all up. Awful, the world is collapsing. So, <laughs> if I ask you the question, do you see sustainability as an impossibility or an opportunity? What do you initially feel? With all the alarming news we see today, it's difficult to see the future as bright. But don't give up. Change is possible. There is hope. Life is under constant change. And true, humans can be individualistic, unfeeling and selfish. But you know what? We can also be capable of, capable of social engagement, compassion and generosity. So what I want to do here today is to create hope for a new manuscript. Call it the new manuscript for the living planet. Going away from this business as usual, living like we've always done. To a story of coexistence, cooperation and balance. Because we can't change the laws of nature. What happens in one part of the world can affect the other part. For example, what happens in the rainforest can affect the Arctic. So what we can do is to change the laws that humans abide to. Because we got ourselves here. We can fix it. The sustainability problems are human-made, so therefore, we can change the structures that got us here. We need to criticize the notion we assume that's always been true when it's merely an idea developed in modern times. And the moment leading to crisis have historically, and it's also today, opening doors for opportunity of an opportunity for change for the livable future. We need to challenge unsustainability and this separation of us, humans, societies and nature. By creating a new story of collaboration and cooperation, calling for reimagination of prosperity, reclaiming the future and also living by it. Because we can gain from sustainability, we can have fresh air, fresh water, equality and prosperity. And once we truly recognize that we're part of these holistic systems and that we all are agents of change, that's when we can truly make sustainable policies and live sustainably. Because we're not fighting nature. We're neither fighting for nature, we're fighting with nature. I wish someone would have told me this story 
when I was 10 years old. Yes, it created this fire inside and led to doing what I'm doing today, but I've lost hope many times in the, in the way these past 20 years. I wish someone would have just told me sustainability is prosperity, that nature is not something to visit or take from, but it's within us. It's everywhere where life thrives. Humans have do, been doing so many mistakes, but we can fix it because we are humans and we did it. So that frustration and the environmental anxiety I've felt for 20 years now <laughs> would have probably just led to hope. And we do not only need to question the world we want to live in, but also to think of what dreams we leave to our children. And we need to leave this obsession we have of the story of despair and instead invite to a language of hope. Because hope doesn't neglect reality. It actually shifts the focus from this horror, this horror story, to facing what is actually happening and focuses us on the possibilities and inviting us to act. Bulgarian author once said, critical thinking without hope is cynicism, but hope without critical thinking is naivety. Humans have, throughout history, done a lot to change the world, to the positive change. And the collective reimagination of change is happening right now, as we see in cases of disaster. People assume that you would fight over resources, but people have actually cooperated, sharing resources. We can also see that social movements are demanding for sustainable life and for sustainable policies that is actually working. And change is not straightforward, I know. And the story is not at all. That would be naive of me. We need to demand solutions and agreements on multiple levels for this to actually work. But this story can be the beginning and the foundation of societal change. So what do we need to do? Of course, I'm not saying that you should continue using plastic straws. So always say no to that plastic straw. Uh, so reflect on your lifestyle. But we, that's not enough. We need to push for social change. Also, reflecting on your relationship with nature. How do you see nature? Do you see it something as over there? And re-evaluate that relationship. Also think about the stories you tell yourself and the stories you tell to others. Because we need to act now. It's incredibly urgent. Well, we can do this because together we're powerful. Thank you.